I'm just following what I've learned from other people and I'm putting it to practice. I'm literally putting it to practice. Will it work, not work? Uh, we'll find out together. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am Ali. And in today's video, we're going to talk about something that is super important to all of us who want to sell or show our products online, which it is product photography. Okay, so product photography is one of the most important things of the entire uh, process of creating a product because you can have the most beautiful product in front of you and in person it looks absolutely gorgeous, but if you cannot take that picture and show in that computer screen or in that phone screen how beautiful this product really is, I'm sorry, but you are not going to be able to sell it or get the reaction that you want. So in this video, I am going to share with you my process that I do to take product photos. Um, this is a phone friendly and budget friendly setup that I think you will be able to replicate as well. So this is part three of the behind the scenes series that I've been recording for you. And now that you've seen me design the bags, come up with the fabric to use and make the pouches, it's time to get the photos so that I can get these bags up on the website. By the way, if you want to be notified when these pouches go live, which is going to be really really soon um, i've added the link down in the description um, so that you can put your information and i'll just send you an email letting you know hey it's live now so if you want to do that it's down there but what i'm talking about here today is two types of photos you need those photos where it shows just the product okay those crisp focused photos that is just your product and nothing else. Nothing else is competing with your product. Usually those photos are uh, taken uh, with a product by themselves in a white background because these type of photos really show off all the details of your bags or your products, whether you're making tumblers, candles, uh, jewelry, um, other bags, whatever it is that you're making, you want to show as much details as possible because people cannot touch the product. They cannot smell it or they cannot feel it. So you want to make sure that they have as much information as possible through the computer screen. These photos with a white background, and even if you don't like a white background, but you like maybe like just a solid background or a very subtle, um, like a marble, I've seen that, but just a solid background, it doesn't have to be white. But these are the pictures that you will usually use for your product page and if you're running uh, Google Ads. And it's just one simple picture of your product. Um, it just makes it really elegant and just easy to understand. You don't want people to get confused and not be sure of what it is that you're selling. So that one picture with a back, white background is definitely um, a must. Even if you only take one of those, you need to have at least one of the front of the product or if it's a set, like two or three together, however it is that you're doing it, but you do need at least one photo with nothing in the background that you can also then take and put over other things. Change the background color, change the uh, the design, do some flat lays, whatever, but you do need that. And trust me, you don't need a big setup to get a professional look. In a few seconds, I'm gonna share with you my setup. And yes, you can buy like light boxes and those things, those are, they're great. I used to have one, but I moved and then eventually my products got bigger. So 
I realized that they were not fitting in that little light box. So that's okay. So I'm gonna show you what I do now. And here's what I use. I use two pieces of cardboard, white cardboard or paper, like they're really uh, thin that you buy at the dollar store. And they're big enough, like 18, 24 inches. I have two of those. I a table that usually I can put against a wall. So um, could be a desk, a little table, something that you can put against the wall. That's important. Two lights that I got from Amazon. And lighting is critical. So if you are planning on investing any money for product photography, start with the lights. Once you get the lighting done, that you understand lighting and you know how to make the lighting work for your product, then you can you know, upgrade and do other things. But definitely, that's the one thing I, I suggest that you get is those lights. I've added a link in the description now. I'm affiliate of Amazon, but anything else I'm gonna mention in this video, I'm not an affiliate of, okay? So as you can see, it is super budget friendly and it works perfectly. Now, if you have access to put your products in front of a big window or a French door, um, the natural lights is always better than artificial lights. The only thing with natural lights is that it could change, right? It could be sunny one day, it could be really cloudy the next day, which by the way, cloudy days are the best for photos. Uh, if you're taking photos outside, if you don't want the harsh shadow, but if you're going for the harsh shadow, then super sunny is good. But let's say that you're taking pictures and you are in front of, a, uh, of, of your window and then here it gets, it gets cloudy all of a sudden. So the lighting changes, okay? Say you need to work during the day and take pictures at night. Well, having a big window will do no good for you because you need lights. <laughs> so that's why I think having uh, the two lights uh, really is something that I can control better than the weather and I can use at any time. So I place the white cardboards like this. I put one on the desk and then another one I place against the wall and it falls down so it looks like there's no seam, okay? So it just pretty much acts like a like a one like one piece of paper. Uh, of the white drop backdrop. If you can find one long one, that works even better because, um, but I really cannot tell the difference, okay? Well, there's no, you really cannot tell the seam because the lighting helps. Now, I also have a white foam board. This one is a little bit thicker, so it doesn't fold. And I bought some contact paper that looks like marble and I covered it with that and and it works perfectly if i want to change the look a little bit if i don't want just the white if i want to give it a little bit of like texture sometimes i use uh that foam board as well and it works really good so the two lights go side by side at about 90 degrees angle and you want to put it in a way where there is no shadow for your product so putting one light like this and the other one like this so that this light overshadows this light. So when this shadow hits the product and it creates a shadow on one end and you put the other light here, then that shadow is gone. What you're trying to do is eliminate the shadows, okay, as much as possible. So that's why you need two lights and I usually put them right in front of the product and I work around it, I move them until I can see that there is no shadow or very little shadow. And you can use one light if you want and if you're looking for that shadow effect, you can do that. Um, but I, fi I find that it's easier for me to edit the photos after I've taken all of the photos together it's easier to edit when I don't have any shadows because sometimes you have to remove the background or make it brighter, lighter, whatever. 
And if you have that shadow there, it just really makes it difficult. And then when it comes to taking the photos, I use my iPhone. If you have a, a smartphone, you know, Samsung, whatever, they work just fine. I mean, nowadays these phones have some nice cameras. So all you need really is just your phone and try to find, you know, the angle that, that you like the best. Now with the iPhone, it has the portrait mode. So I use that and I use the contour light and I use the aperture at 16, which the bigger the aperture, the less blurry it is on the background. But if I take a photo of the product in portrait mode and I know I have something in the background, say the sewing machine or something like that, then I change the aperture, which is the little F to like a four. And that makes it really blurry on the background. And I try to take as many angles as I can. So I take photos of the sides, the top, the bottom, open, close, the inside, anything, because people cannot touch these bags. So they want, you want to create an image to them. You want to show them what's in your bag, especially for bags. They like to see the inside. They want to see how many pockets, even the bottom. They want to see if, if the, if the bag has purse feet. If you sell, um, say jewelry, you want to like show, you know, the front, the back. If you sell, um, tumblers, like the top of it, see how the lid work. It looks the close up of the design, if it's glitter, you know, etc. So you, you try to get as creative as you can and try to take as many pictures as you think you will need. And especially if you, if you have people asking you sometimes about a specific, uh, feature of your product, we'll take a picture of that feature and that way you have it right there. The second type of photo that you need is a lifestyle photo and you need to show the product in use. And I get it. A lot of times we were like, well, I mean, they know how to carry a bag. They know how to drink from a cup. You know, they know how to wear a bracelet, but you want to show people their lives are like, oh, you're drinking a coffee with a beautiful bracelet, laughing with a friend, and it just paints a picture in their head like, oh yeah, when I go out with my friends, I can wear my, you know, beautiful bra bracelet. Or um, everybody knows how to carry a bag, but you want to see the size of the bag in a person to see if it's big enough too small, too big. You know, if you don't have a person and I like get a mannequin, <laughs> do something, show the measurements, but you got to show the, the item in use. Like for the pouches that I just made, um, they're pouches, they're makeup pouches, there are toiletries and things like that. So what I did is that I used the bag. I took pictures of the pouches in the scenario where you will be packing it say in the bathroom you're packing your toiletries and so i show you know lotions and uh, pads tampons uh, lipstick uh, phone chargers uh, makeup brushes whatever so to get an idea of this is how i can use it and also the size this is how big this pouch is put it on a hand and show it Com in comparison to the hand, oh, this is how big this product is. It's bigger than a hand or it's, or it's half the size of a hand. Things like that really, really help. And for the lifestyle photos, you can do really anything. Sometimes I just show the sewing machine in the background just to kind of show that it is a handmade bag or in the front of the house, you know, in front of a brick wall or in the backyard with the trees in the backyard if you live in the city you can go to a park and where you have the city in the background and or the ocean the river whatever um, don't go crazy i mean you're not going to need that many pictures you're definitely going to need a white picture or with a plain background for your website for the product page and then the second third and fourth can be in use you know, or a lifestyle picture. And then those lifestyle pictures is what you're going to use for your banner on your website, social media, emails, etc.
Something else I do is I take a quick video as I'm taking the pictures for the lifestyle pictures. And the videos can only, they don't need to be long, 15, 10, 15, 20 seconds, and just showing like how to use it, how to close it, how to open it, how to pack it, how to, somebody smelling it. I don't know, what if somebody put it on the lipstick or the lotion, anything like that, and it doesn't have to be long, but those quick little videos are great because then you can put them all together and make a longer reel or use it for social media ads or just anything, put it on YouTube, whatever. So having those quick little videos, nobody has to talk. It can be just the hands or just the face or whatever, but a quick little snapshot of how to use that product in a video is gold. And nowadays you can even put it, if you have Shopify I don't, and Etsy too, you can actually upload a quick little video and that helps so much because people click on those videos to actually see how the product looks and in the video you can get a better look of the actual material or the the close-up like if it glitters then you can really see how much it glitters you know so that's really really important but we can talk about that in another video um, which could be part of the same series like I'm getting ready to upload these photos to Shopify but there is so much more that happens after uploading the photos just making the bags and taking the pictures and uploading them to etsy or shopify or whatever is not everything there is so much more that happens after that and we can definitely talk about that if you want me to so let me know down in the comments if that's what you want me to share with you in future videos now remember i'm not an expert i am not trying to sell a class a course i'm just following what other experts have shown me what i've learned from other people and i'm putting it to practice i'm literally putting it to practice will it work not work uh, we'll find out together <laughs> but i'm just follow, i'm just sharing the process as i'm following it and you can see that on the other videos that are part of this series for example on part one i show you how i decided to cre and what product to make and what fabrics to choose. And on part two, I share with you the process on how I decided to make all these pouches at once. So go ahead and pick whichever one of those two videos you wanna watch now, and I'll see you in the next video. Ciao.